Hello there and welcome to my channel, beautiful people. Thank you for joining me today. Um, this is another episode, actually, in fact, episode 19 of 100 Days of Kubernetes, the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. I'm going to share everything here on my channel for you so you can follow along if you're interested in that. Now, today we're going to be looking at something that you likely are already familiar with. You likely already know what it is and you probably have used it. I certainly used it in the past different um, videos and I've referenced it multiple different times. So it's basically something that's used to divide your cluster into different areas and depending on your access rates and policies within those different areas, uh, different people might be able to access those different areas. Now that's especially handy if you want to spin up multiple applications. Let's say you have one application, you want to have it in um, QA, testing, production, development, whatever namespace you want to have. Oh, I, I said it. <laughs> so whatever, uh, whatever different environments you want to have, you could spin up different namespaces for those. Uh, what are namespaces? How do they work? Why would we want to use them? Let's answer the last question first. Why would we want to use namespaces? Let's draw it. <laughs> So, when we have a namespace, we basically, and let's assume this is our cluster, and then within the cluster, we, well, <laughs> we have nodes. So we have a master node with which we communicate with, and then we have, let's say, two worker nodes, right? They're gonna overlap now in some way. They're usually not overlapping. Anyway, <laughs> so we have those worker nodes, and then on those worker nodes, we want to have kind of hypothetical I'm calling it hypothetical spaces, okay? So hypothetical spaces, meaning like this is one space with pods running in them. This is another space with pods running in them. And then here might be another space with pods running in them. I don't think that if you have several no like that if you have pods running within a namespace, that your cluster would necessarily divide those pods um, across nodes. But it could, I guess it could happen. I don't see why not, but I don't think this is, this is a proper example. I think it's a highly hypothetical example in my case, in my brain. So <laughs> let's not talk further about that. But this is namespace one and this is namespace two, yeah? So I could say, okay, this namespace has access rights X, Y, Z. I know this is not how access rights work, but this one maybe only has X and Y. So only who has access rights Z could access this namespace over here. So you can see you can have different policies and access rights and so on configured for your different namespaces. So in that case, you could say, okay, since this namespace over here has higher privileges, like it requires higher privileges to use that namespace, therefore we're going to name it or this is going to be our production cluster maybe and only people who have access rate Z can deploy to that namespace versus if you have access to this namespace over here to namespace 2 you will have access to it it's not that like it's not that wow it's just like instead of having to have how do you do that can I scroll down okay so instead of having to have multiple Cluster. So let's say this is one cluster. This is one cluster, and here is um, here is namespace one for your production. Here is namespace two, or uh, like the the pods that you would otherwise deploy in namespace two in like your testing QA whatever environment. Then you would have to maintain both of those clusters, right? You would have to maintain both of those resources, and you will have to maintain all the resources that are needed to run both of those clusters, and that scales quite quickly once you have more and more clusters that you have to maintain right you don't want to maintain those you want to make your life life easier so with that with just creating namespaces and then maybe having different namespaces for different environments you can make your life a lot easier so let's take a look at how you can use namespaces with kubectl as you can see here again following our namespace we didn't add any namespace yet we're gonna add a new namespace now so you can go ahead and do this create namespace testing and once I created that it's creating a new namespace 
So as you can see, we have these namespaces right now set up. We have our namespace testing. However, whenever I would want to now deploy a resource to my namespace testing, I would have to do kubectl, kubectl, and then apply the resource and then the name of resource. And I would have to specify the namespace and then in this case testing. And similarly, if I want to get the resources, I would also have to specify, okay, hey cluster, I want to get all of the resources that are namespace testing. And that's quite hideous if you have to do it every single time you write a kubectl command. Now, there are obviously tools such as K9S and others that would make it easier to navigate between those different namespaces and use those different namespaces, deploy new resources and so on. However, you don't necessarily use them, especially if it's just your local cluster. Why would, why would you use a bunch of different tools just to manage that cluster and deploy new resources to play around with? So, but you still want to make your life easier. So we're going to make our lives easier. We're not going to execute this since it's not actually a resource itself. But we're going to try to set as our context or create the namespace testing as a context. So similar how we use our here our Docker desktop um, Kubernetes cluster as a context with, for kubectl, we can use the namespace testing as a context for kubectl. So in this case, our context testing was created. Yay! So we can now kubectl config get context. And as you can see here now, oh, you can see it. Good. I have my testing um, well, context, environment, whatever you want to call it. But that actually is within my Docker desktop cluster. And then I have my MicroKates cluster. So I have those two clusters, who, which are actually clusters. And then I have my namespace called testing with, that's also like accessible. So I could go ahead and say keep kind of config and then use, ooh, I can't actually see it, <laughs> context. And I want to say um, testing. Right, so we switch to our testing context. So if I go now ahead and I say kubectl um, config con context, I'm on a context testing. Now let's have a look in the namespace that I was in testing. There shouldn't be any namespace because testing itself is a namespace. Ha, that's where it gets interesting. Okay, so <laughs> con config and then uh, no, get namespace. Okay, so. This is really interesting because even though we're in like we're within a context here testing, right? And if we would um, be within our Docker desktop cluster, we would receive the same like return information as if we are within the testing namespace because logically the testing namespace is still within that cluster. So it still has to provide us with the same information as if we are within the context of the cluster itself, even though we are within the testing namespace. But now we can deploy new information on new information, new resources here on that part, right? So let's say we want to change the export, the tag. So a different tag to what we had before. Similar with this one. Now I'm probably going to fast forward on that. Anyway, um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to create some resources. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, something is deprecated, which we can have a look at later. And now let's see kubectl get all. And if I say kubectl get all in this case, since I'm within the context testing, right? Where is it? Anyway, I'm within the context testing, right? Um, it should still provide, like it should provide me with all the resources that I've created within the namespace cluster. So I don't have to specify any more namespace and then testing. It knows it by default that that's the resource that I mean to use. So as you can see here, those are the resources that I mean to use, which is really nice. And now we could go ahead as before. And since they are all up and running, I can now go ahead and say, where was it? Here, get the status of this. Does that work? Okay, so we have to say deployment. Okay, so this is our uh, running properly, I assume. Now kubectl and then get all. And now we want to say namespace default because we want to just take a look at the resource that I have in the default namespace. 
So these are the resources in the default namespace. As you can see, they are older than the resource that we just created over here. And I'm just assuming that they are in <laughs> no, I know they are in different namespaces, right? You can see they're in different namespaces. These are the resources within the default one. And kubectl get all these are the resources that are within my testing namespace. Now, the last interesting thing I want to show you is that I don't know how to actually say in English. It's a prunability. No. So if I delete namespace testing, I shouldn't delete namespace default. I don't think I can even do that. It would be interesting to try it out, but I'm not going to try it out now. You could try it out, but don't blame me. <laughs> anyway, so I could go now ahead and delete the namespace testing. So let's just switch uh, the get context. Cubefile config config um, use context and then we're going to switch docker desktop since usually you would or if you're not working within a specific namespace predominantly you would usually still be in the default cluster um, so in this case I'm again kubectl as you can see now, it's switched to the different cluster, to different context. Um, well, it's the same cluster. It's a different context. Here's our testing namespace. And I want to delete our testing namespace now. So I'm going to say kubectl, delete, and a namespace, namespace. In this case, I have to specify it like that since it's a resource itself, and I'm not specifying within which namespace. Um, so I could also probably delete all. Maybe that's a thing. Anyway, so delete namespace, and then testing. So I want to delete the namespace testing. Now it's deleted. And with that, it will delete all of the resources that I actually created within this namespace specifically, which is really interesting. So it, it makes it a lot easier for you to clean up your resources, to clean up your cluster, because you don't want to have random pods running around, especially if they have uh, ports exposed and so on, right? So you always want to make sure that you are only using the resources that are actually needed for your application to run and that you clean up after such experiments, right? So kubectl get namespace. Now, as you can see, we don't have the namespace anymore. Kubectl config. Let's see if we still have um, our context. Well, the context still exists, but it doesn't refer anymore. It can't refer anymore to a namespace. So I probably would have to delete the context as well if I want to get rid of the testing context. Now this is it for episode 19. I hope it was useful to you. If it was, please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Your support would mean the world to me. Also, if you watched this far, it must be that you're serious about learning Kubernetes and DevOps. So subscribe to my weekly newsletter where I deliver free online learning resources from across the DevOps space right to your inbox. Sign up below. <laughs> anyway, I hope to see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.